Sound. We use sound to talk, to make music, and to avoid danger. But what exactly is sound? The story of sound is one of vibration, pressure, and moving molecules. Let's start with the molecules. The air that surrounds you is packed with tiny molecules such as nitrogen and oxygen. A sound is made when something vibrates, and these vibrations create pressure waves that move the air molecules. And sound can be made from the vibrations of anything. Sound is made from the vibrations of guitar strings, of vocal cords, the vibration of plastic, the vibration of anything. Wait, then why is there no sound in space? Space is a vacuum, which means there are no molecules to move. But how do moving molecules become the sound that you hear? To answer this question, we need to take a closer look at the tiny structures inside the ear. There's the outer ear, the ear canal, the ear drum, and three tiny ear bones. These are the smallest bones in the body and they can all fit on a single quarter. And the smallest of these ear bones connects to my favorite ear organ, the cochlea. The cochlea kind of looks like a snail, but instead of leaving a trail of slime inside your head, the cochlea is the place where sound waves are made into electrical signals. And now that we know our basic ear anatomy, we can learn how we hear sound. Sound waves, which are pressure waves of air molecules, enter the ear. These waves cause the eardrum to vibrate, which vibrates the tiny bones in your middle ear. And these bones' vibration pattern activates cells in the cochlea. These cochlea cells then send the signal to your brain via the cochlear nerve, and ta-da! You can hear the applause. Now that we know how we hear sound, it's time to answer another, another crucial question. How can we tell the difference between the sound waves of a cow and a cricket? One key to this question is that different vibration speeds create different sound waves. For example, when a cow moves, its vocal cords have relatively slow vibrations, which creates a low frequency sound wave. When a cricket rubs its wings together, they create fast vibrations, which creates a higher frequency sound wave. Now you may be thinking, wait, where are the air molecules? These sound wave lines represent pressure waves of molecules, where the peaks are areas of high pressure that are packed with molecules, and the valleys are areas of low pressure with fewer molecules. Sorry if I startled you. Did you know that loud noises are really good at getting people's attention? Let's summarize what we've learned so far. We know that different speeds of vibration create different frequencies of pressure waves, which generate different movements of molecules, which create different sounds. And different sounds are also made by the shape of the sound wave. And the loudness of a sound depends on the amount of energy from the source. For example, Hitting a drum with little energy makes a sound wave with low amplitude, and a high energy hit makes the same waveform shape but has higher amplitude. And ta-da! All these different sound waves create the sounds that surround you. And now it's time for the final sound facts! Humans can only hear sounds within a certain frequency range. The sounds from a dog whistle and an elephant rumble are outside our audible range. Light waves travel over 800,000 times faster than sound waves, which is why you can see lightning before you hear the thunder. And finally, if you have hearing problems, a hearing aid can be used to amplify sound waves. And if you have a damaged eardrum, bones, or cochlea, a cochlear implant can be used to send electric signals directly to the cochlear nerve. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you will listen to the world with a new appreciation for sound.